Welcome everybody, we're so glad you're all here tonight. Um, X632 and it's June 15, 2017. I'd like to welcome you all to our Beaver Creek City Schools Board of Education joint work session with the Beaver Creek Township tonight. We are so glad you're all here. It is an honor to have you here tonight. This is great, I'm excited. Bye, Mommy. So, Mrs. Rucker, will you please call for, um, us to order? I call the roll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sarah? Here. Mr. Morrison? Here. Mr. Taylor? Here. And Ms. Hunt is absent, but she's available for work. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to you. Yes? Yep. So, uh, good evening. Uh, today is Thursday, June 15, 2017. We are beginning at 6.31 p.m. A special meeting. The purpose of the special meeting of the trustees is to meet in open session with the officials of the Beaver Creek Board of Education to discuss joint topics of mutual interest between Beaver Creek Township and the Beaver Creek City Schools. And we're pleased to be here. Thank you for having us. Uh, at this time, we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Agenda before us as trustees. We have a motion to approve the agenda as so moved. Second. Ms. Grant. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Kraft. Yes. Mr. Kraft. Yes. Thank you. This time uh, we will turn things over to Mr. Zahari. We have a few presentations that we'd like to share with the Board of Education. Thank you, Board, uh, for the trustees. This is our first joint meeting that I know of. Carol, I think so. Yeah. Um, so what we wanted to talk about, uh, I've been working with the superintendent um, and, and since I've been with the township and, and had an opportunity to work with the superintendent uh, to discuss some of the growth that we were having. One of the things we discussed is about presenting to you um, and uh, for asking allow the board to ask any questions about some of the growth in the unincorporated area of the township. Before you have a PowerPoint presentation, I will copy of the slides there of some of the economic impact we're going to see for the community in the unincorporated area. So once again, thank you. I have some extra handouts for anyone out here that would like to see. Uh, feel free to take them home. Population uh, or student population. 
Um, we've made a lot of work in the township on focusing on areas within the township that we think are prime for economic development. And in 2015, with the leadership of the township trustees, uh, they instructed me to create an economic development plan. It was uh, presented to the trustees in 15 and approved. We focus on two areas in the township, the southeast planning area, uh, which in the little small map here is right here in the, uh, the airport, around the Green County Airport, uh, which is in Beaver Creek Township. A lot of people believe it's in the city of Zeman, but it is in Beaver Creek Township. Uh, and the other is uh, along US 35 in this section here. Uh, where we see uh, a lot of activity with the uh, car dealerships. We also put in place uh, two TIFs, um, and this is an economic development tool to uh, allow us to reinvest some of the tax money back into the infrastructure in the area. That can go towards roads, uh, water and sewer projects, street lights, sidewalks. Uh, so we've established two TIFs in those two planning areas identified. Um, we also have discussed that uh, we're working with our zoning commission to create a highway overlay district to focus on certain things that will be allowed along US 35. Different sign heights, um, setbacks will be different, and um, not approved yet, we're just talking about some different language and then it's different from the rest of our zoning code. Uh, and the other thing that we're working with with Green County on is to market the car dealerships and create a auto mall concept, uh, much like when I say King's Auto Mall, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, we've actually sat with the dealerships and the county commissioners and discussed even naming it. And so I think we're down to the Creek Auto Mall. So um, now part of that would be a big marketing plan put on by the county commissioners uh, and managed by somebody locally or websites. We do have two more car dealerships coming to that area. Um, we have a VW dealership that's uh, on its way to being built, and currently under construction is a Kia dealership where the whole, old hotel used to be. What, what did you say it was? Kia. 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 Okay. Um, these are some of our businesses in Beaver Creek Township. Our largest build, uh, business in Beaver Creek Township is GE. Uh, they have expanded, uh, which is great news for all of us. Um, they've added a fourth shift, uh, or fourth shift, a third shift in some of their plans. Um, so these are last year. Some of the businesses you see here, uh, unfortunately, have uh, decided to move out of the area, uh, two of which are moving to Montgomery County. But next year, I'll be happy to report two more businesses, uh, being Kia and DW. Some of the other economic commercial development that uh, is going to be available in the township, uh, and this is essentially your neighbors, uh, is right here. This is Stonehill Village. Here is Coy Trayvine. Uh, this is Ankeny Road and Dayton Xenia. And this is Trayvine. We have a commercial zone right here that is currently for sale uh, in Stonehill Village. And that's going to be a mix from multifamily to commercial type buildings. Um, so that will be essentially on the corner of Dayton Zini and Trayvon. Valley Springs, there's been a lot of talk about this uh, development. Uh, this is located along US 35. This is Valley, excuse me, Trayvon, Valley, and the airport and Country Club in the north. This is the big open area uh, along the river. Uh, this was a seventh month project uh, with, between our zoning commission and the board of township trustees to approve this. We went into a lot of planning in this area, and this includes one of our TIFs. Um, we are seeing some movement on this. Um, the developer, our landowner, just bought this additional property down here for residential. Um, and Mr. Amrine, our zoning and planning administrator, uh, is here tonight. Uh, we met with a realtor to discuss this commercial property and this commercial property over here. <coughs> now, when it was first approved, this is where uh, you might have seen on Channel 7 that we were, the Board of Township Trustees approved the next uh, water park, uh, much like the beach. In fact, they showed the pictures of the beach. Uh, it does have some water features, but I assure you uh, there's not going to be three story water slides there. There is a lake, a uh, 42 acre lake, with a little marina. Uh, and this is a conference center and hotel um, center, 
next to the airport. That will have some water features in the area. Um, but uh, when it was reported, it was, you know, we were putting in a major water park and we're not putting in a major water park. So to focus on a couple of these areas, this is the, the development I pointed out just along US 35. Uh, in the concept plan is nine buildings. Uh, totaling about 790,000 square feet, and they're anticipating anywhere between 1,000 to uh, 2,600 uh, employees working in those buildings. Um, now, that, this is a concept plan, so they can come in with something else once the land uh, is, is sold or another developer comes in. This area along here is the next major area that we've talked about with the realtor. This is Valley, and then the airport's right here. Uh, and this will be modified with the proposed uh, highway change. Uh, there will be an actual exit right here. Uh, but right now they're proposing five facilities, four restaurants, and, and up to about 1,600 employees. Now, these areas obviously impact uh, the school board, the schools in regards to tax base, and as well as the township. Uh, we don't see a lot other than uh, one of the residential areas here near Country Club of the North that will uh, affect the student population. Now let's talk about the student population and the potential impact uh, to the schools uh, as well as the community and tax base as well. And that's our residential development. Uh, the township currently has in place 2,896 approved homes. Now by the end of the month, Board of Township Trustees will be hearing a case on the 26th of June to approve uh, another development, and that will put us over 2,900 uh, approved homes that they approved. Um, of those 2,896 homes, uh, 1,813 have been completed, um, and 63% of all the developments uh, in the township are complete. In other words, there's homes on the parcels, uh, and people are living there. As of June 13th, so this is just uh, this week, we have 318 shovel-ready lots, which means the roads are in, the utilities in, the lots are ready to go. All we need is someone to buy them, and they'll start building a house. Um, and that number is fluid. Every week, uh, we get it usually goes up. Sometimes it goes down, and next week it goes back up, depending on uh, who's buying the lots. In 2015, we had the honor of having four Omarama homes in the unincorporated area of the township. Uh, last year we had two of the eight Omarama homes in Deer Creek Township. Uh, one was uh, by Gordon Fight in Woodridge, beautiful development if you haven't been out there. Um, and uh, the other was by uh, Custom Concepts on the south, uh, south side of the township off of South Fairfield. Two beautiful homes to put in there. And we hear that the next Omarama we may have two or three again. So that's Definitely putting a, a focus on Beaver Creek Township <coughs> in our community. And I want to say getting into the eight regions. Uh, residential developments. Um, so you can see actually during the downturn in the economy and where it hit the township and much like every other jurisdiction. Uh, and in the middle of that, uh, we took the opportunity to redo the way we do business with developers. We, we, redid our entire PEP process, and so it is handled by staff now uh, and recommendations to our zoning commission. It used to be we provide all the information to the zoning commission and then have several months of meetings before then they went to the Board of Township Trustees. So uh, our zoning commission is an all-volunteer board and uh, unincorporated residents, so they, they like uh, the, the shorter meetings. Now, we have longer meetings when we present, uh, maybe three or four hour meetings, but for out the developer and uh, the residents by short period of time. Um, so we did those changes and then it was like a light switch turning on uh, in regards to development in the township. Uh, we were, during the downturn, the, county, the only township uh, that was building as quickly in the entire Miami Valley region, uh, including some cities. Uh, so uh, we were fortunate enough to continue to see all the development during the downturn in the economy. Last year we hit a record. 101 new homes being built. And I think we're going to see that trend for quite some time. Permits are up. Uh, oh, one thing I'd like to point out. Uh, we're we have a 35% increase uh, compared to this time last year. So 
So we're seeing as an increase even in, in homes being built uh, compared to last year. Now we did have a lot uh, mild winter, as we all know, less, uh, less cats on schools, less salts on the putting on plows and salt on the river. So um, I, we think some of that uh, is due to the mild winter we had because uh, we were actually issuing permits in January to build houses, which is unusual. Permits are also up, um, which just tells us in the township that people are reinvesting in the property. These are anything from pools to fences to sheds to additions. Um, so, and we, we've seen a 41% increase compared at this time compared to last year. So uh, we're gonna see those numbers continue to rise, which is good news. So I wanna go through some of the residential developments. These are our active, and these are the ones that uh, we're gonna see a lot of growth in. Uh, this is not all the developments we have. Uh, Ed, correct, how many PUDs do we have? Total in the township, yeah. 37. 37, so we could be here all night if I went through all 37. Uh, but these are the ones that are affect the school district or, and, um, and our most active. Uh, Spring Meadows and Spring Ridge, uh, pretty much neighbors, but I'll go over Spring Meadows first. Uh, this is located on the corner of New Jersey Trayvine and Trayvine and the unincorporated area of the township. Uh, this is growing quick, uh, 136 single family dwellings. 104 of them are complete and we have 22 shovel ready lots. Um, I would anticipate that this will probably be built out by next year. Right across the street, um, and this is uh, between Spring Meadows and Fawn Ridge in the city of Fairborn. Um, 132 homes, 118 homes have been completed uh, and 14 lots currently. Uh, and this one I think is also going to be built out. Claiborne Greens, this is a new builder to uh, the Dayton area and to Beaver Creek as a whole, whether city or the township. Um, this is located in Stonehill. So this is uh, <coughs> Trayvine right here, Ankeny, and here's you can see part of the school right there, the track for Corey Trayvine. Um, in this area, we have 166 uh, single family homes that are planned, 77 have been completed, and 38 are shovel ready. Uh, we have heard that MI Homes uh, wants to expand and stay in the town and they're looking at additional land uh, to purchase for another development. So uh, we're very great to work with. Nice homes too. Liberty Hill is another very active uh, part of Stone Hill Village. Uh, this is located off a of trade line and uh, Ankeny, would, Ankeny Road would be down here in the lower part of your map. Um, it's 162 homes planned there, 146 have been completed, and 16 are shovel ready. Uh, we do anticipate uh, another site plan this year from the Liberty Hill, we don't know the name of it, so we'll call it Liberty Hill 2 for right now, or 3. Um, and it's an additional 42 acres that will be developed. Nathaniel's Grove, now this is, a, this is a big one. This is off Beaver Valley. Uh, just south of New Germany Trayvine, um, and here is Kemp Road. I'm sorry, Kemp Road's right here. Uh, this is Stephen Thaler's property. So this is a very large development. It just started. Um, you might have seen the water line being put in along the river. Uh, it's going to the new development, um, and the road has just been put in or cut in. It's not, they don't have uh, asphalt down yet. Uh, it's 475 homes that are proposed and approved, uh, and we believe at the end of this summer there's going to be 26 shovel-ready lots, uh, and they're ready to move. So uh, they're ready to move last summer, but we had a delay with uh, getting the county water up to the, to the development. Coach Cup in the north, um, in the unincorporated area of the township, uh, we. Ed just told me we've got some good news on that, just uh, walking in today's meeting. They have uh, 311 single family uh, dwellings that are approved. Uh, 241 homes have been completed and 70 are uh, shovel ready. And I was just told walking in the door, this is new for the Board of Township Trustees, that 26 lots just sold to a uh, builder. So, uh, and it's coming in for the first permit pretty soon. So, uh, we're gonna see a lot of movement in there. 
River Reserves. This is uh, another neighbor of yours uh, to the vacant land you own. Uh, this is Ohio University or Russ Research Center. Uh, this is Indian Ripple, and this is <coughs> South Alpha Bell right here. This is the property that the school board owns right here, uh, the 98 acres, or 80, 89 acres, I'm sorry, 89 acres. Uh, River Reserve is 244 homes uh, that are being approved. Uh, and it backs up to the Little Miami River and ODNR's property. Uh, it's about 132 acres <coughs> and uh, we believe, uh, oh, I believe there are 41 children, 41 lots ready to be built on. So we got our first permit just a couple weeks ago on that one. That's a big development. Woodridge, that's what I mentioned where the Homorama home was last year. Uh, this is 44 single-family uh, homes, large lots, three to five acre lots. Um, 17 homes have been completed, 27 are ready to go. Uh, and I mentioned the new development uh, for the National <coughs> Trustees on the 26th. We'll be hearing a, uh, reviewing a site plan for Woodbridge Curry, which will be 19 homes, uh, 42 acres. Once again, large lots, the largest uh, lot being, uh, I think, 10 acres. Baxley Hills, um, off of Shepherd, right next to the Country Club of the North. So this is Indian Ripple. Uh, this is Shepherd Road that leads down uh, Township Line is right here for between Sugar Creek and Beaver Creek Townships. Uh, 89 approved homes currently. Uh, 63 have been completed, and we have 26 shovel ready lots. Across the street is Scarborough, same thing. Uh, another Arnold uh, development, same area just across the street from Shepherd. 75 homes, 14 have been completed, and 24. Some nice lots back there along the uh, Little Miami River. So what does this mean to all of us in the township and the school board? Well, we're seeing a significant growth uh, in the unincorporated area of the township. Uh, in 2015, 34% of all residential growth was in Beaver Creek Township. Uh, and, I'm uh, sorry, in Beaver Creek as a community for the county. So I'll take the city and the township, that's 34%. Uh, and then I have the number breakdown right between uh, Beaver Creek City and Beaver Creek Township. Obviously what we're seeing as a trend between our, our municipal partners in the city is they're seeing a lot of the commercial growth, uh, as indicated by the numbers in the slide, uh, and we're seeing a lot of the residential growth uh, in the community. And 65% of all commercial growth was in the Beaver Creek community, so between the city and the township, and those numbers are there as well. 16 numbers are also impressive, uh, and we're going to see this trend, I think, in 17 as well. 30% of all residential growth was in the Beaver Creek community, from the city and the township, uh, and 28% of commercial growth uh, was in the Beaver Creek community, from the city and the township. And I'll put a little asterisk next to that one. Um, if we take the Cornerstone Project Act, which is in the city of Centerville, uh, but it's also in Greenland County, they have the largest growth. Uh, you take those numbers out, we would have been pretty close to last year being the leaders in the A lot of questions I get about is this next project is the Super Street. I uh, spoke uh, to several civic organizations in the community about the Super Street. We did secure funding. I have the funding breakdown for the Super Streets. This does impact uh, the schools because 104 times a day, your buses cross Orchard, Alpha, and Factory Roads, and Valley Trail. And uh, I believe it was three years ago now, uh, one of your buses was uh, hit by a semi at Factory. Um, there is no federal funding. So the first question I get about this project is why not the bridges and over, over uh, interchanges and, and overpasses? Well, just the trade line, excuse me, the orchard and factory interchange is going to be $120 million. Now, if we go to that, go to the state of Ohio with that project, we have to have at least a minimum 20%. And I can tell you that the city and the township can't afford $54 million at two years cost. That $120 million has gone up so every year since construction costs continues to go up. So this is a safe alternative um, to the intersections of factory and US 35 and 
Orchard in 35. Now Trayvine and Valley 35, the township and the county will continue to apply for state funding for that project. That project's 26 million, and that is a proposed uh, overpass over US 35. Um, we did work out uh, some local matches, and we did get approved. This project will, is actually started right now. Construction will start summer or fall of next year. And this will coincide with the city of Beaver Creek's project, which is to remove Shaker Town off the US 35 and connect it to Yellow Brick, uh, which we're gonna be working with the city on, on the other section. There's $5 million from the state. Yes, this is our, I just went to the local match. But the five, we, we did receive $5 million in a safety grant um, from the state of Ohio, and we received $5 million in track funding, which is what was left over and needed. Uh, the city and the township are putting $250,000 towards the project, and the county's putting over a million into the project. And my value regional planning commission um, came to the table with $1.8 million. So we were able to get this project going. Now, I have, do have an animation, so I'll let the animation play to explain how the road, the cars go through it. But essentially, if you imagine this here being factory, and from left to right would be US 35, you will not be able to go directly across like you do now. Um, you will have to essentially go into a roundabout. Everybody says, so I gotta make a right hand turn to get to the high school. And the answer is yes, you'll have to make a right hand turn to get to the high school. But you'll be able to loop around uh, in this system. The system is designed once you have a green light. So as you see the cars going on, such a what we'll call factory in this animation, uh, you'll get a green light. Uh, you'll get a green light through the entire <coughs> super street. It also stops the traffic sooner than getting into the intersection. So as you can see, uh, just changed, but on this map, you'll be able to stop down here. You can see it up here. So you can imagine this is in front of the Nissan dealership and you see the traffic stopping. In a traditional intersection that we see at factory and at orchard, there are 32 collision points when you drive through that intersection. For the super street, we reduce it to 14. And the other thing the state of Ohio is gonna do and agree to do is add sidewalks through this. And it looks like a Z pattern through there. Um, are there any questions on the super street? I got a lot of questions on the super street. <laughs> uh, this will be similar at the orchard intersection as well. So essentially you'll see something very similar to this at the next intersection to the east in orchard. Um, factory and factory of US 35 is in the city. Alpha, the intersection there. Uh, we're not closing Alpha, either side of it. It'll just be right turn only. Uh, you'll not be able to make a left hand turn out onto the highway. Uh, the north side is in the city, the south side is in the township, and then uh, Orchard is all in the township. So we'll see a lot of construction in 2018 on the Shaker Town project that the city has uh, and <coughs> the Super Street project that we're all sharing. One more thing I'd like to talk about real quick, uh, because of these, all these residential developments, and I'm gonna have Mr. Amright come to speak because he serves on the committee, uh, is the safe routes to schools that we've been working with, uh, community leaders, city of Beaver Creek, police departments, the sheriff's department, uh, the schools and the PTOs, and as well as your staff. So I, I'm just gonna have Ed talk just a few seconds about that, and then we'll move on to the fire chief. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon. Um, as you may know, Safe Routes to Schools is a national program that originated as a, an anti-obesity effort and, and started in, um, in the Health and Human Services Department. It quickly realized that most of the improvements needed, they identified encouraging children to walk and ride their bicycles to school as one of the primary ways to encourage healthy living habits among school children. Um, that being the case, most of the improvements that communities needed to achieve that goal of good health lay in transportation infrastructure. If we're going to encourage kids to walk and ride their bikes to school, we have to be able to have them do it safely. And so the emphasis nationally shifted from 
health and human services to transportation without losing the emphasis on health. So, so um, this has been alive now for about 15 years nationally. It was, it, it was introduced gradually around the country. Some states are rather mature in their um, safe routes to schools plans. Ohio has 50 some uh, plans in various stages of completion approval or under construction. And uh, locally, the effort was spearheaded last year uh, by residents. Um, specifically, the chairman of our committee is, uh, our planning committee is um, of a fellow with kids in the school. So, um, the, the planning efforts have included um, detailed demographic, demographic and data analysis and collection from all the schools. We did initial surveys among, uh, to all the, to parent groups of every school in the district. And every school said, yes, we want to participate somehow. Now, as you, as you know, the barriers to safe walking and riding bikes to, to schools are different at each school in this district. Koi Trayvine absolutely doesn't have the same problems as Maine does or the same opportunities. So this is going to require the, um, the, the, the putting together of, of distinct plans for each school within the umbrella of a macro uh, an overarching plan. The process involves submitting a plan to the um, Department of Transportation once approved, it's called a school travel plan. Once approved, uh, any uh, remediation or, uh, or uh, provision in the plan that addresses the problems associated with walking and riding bikes to school if it's in the plan and the plan is approved, then we are free to apply for funding to implement that plan. The, uh, the funding model uh, has long and continues to offer 100% coverage in the form of reimbursement. So it does require some upfront investment by local jurisdictions, whether it's school uh, district or the township or the city. Um, but it, it, it seems as though it'll be efficacious for us to sort of reach out, grab for some low-hanging fruit early, get some additional buy-in. We've had very good uh, participation from um, school by school, from small groups of parents who are willing to help us with the planning process. With I mean, the citizens of Beaver Creek have an incredible array, array, a range, excuse me, of talents and they're willing to contribute those, whether it's marketing or data analysis or whatever, all of this is going into the plan. I want to thank um, both Bill McLaughlin and even to a, a higher degree, Paul Lawton, for uh, contributing to these efforts, for supporting the efforts of the planning committee. It's a, it's a citizen group. Um, also, the city of Beaver Creek has made it possible for us to avoid having to hire professional consulting engineers by um, allowing an engineer on their staff to be to become the engineer for this uh, for this planning effort. So it's truly a multi-jurisdictional effort, and we look forward to uh, continuing work this year on the individual school plans so that we can wrap it up, have a big um, noisy public meeting. Uh, to, to unveil the plan to the whole Beaver Creek community, and uh, then we'll submit it to the state after we uh, after we incorporate the comments from from you guys and the public. But I wanted to thank everybody for their support and their participation in this. Yes. I've got a question. I'm I, I, I looking around the room, and I think I may be the only remaining person who is involved in the zoning and planning process for Trayvon and Floyd. Mm -hmm. And we were, we were, we had to commit that we would never let children ride their bikes or walk to school around through those neighborhoods next door. Um, so I, I just, I, you know, 
we have to keep that commitment, don't we? Or does that go away? Well, there's there's other alternatives. Okay. Well, it's a dangerous, yeah. dangerous. Yeah. And we have all the ditches. The, uh, the committee has talked at length about alternatives uh, at the safe routes. One of them is even connecting Stone Hill to, to the current school, which will be easy. Um, we, we didn't make any commitment to the Stone Hill. Right, right. It, yeah. It's the ones. That's right. It's, to the, it's to the west. <coughs> I mean, and currently, right now, the county engineer doesn't allow, uh, David Zena is a county road. Uh, the county engineer doesn't allow for uh, bypass or any type of pass on, on county roads currently. So we've looked at alternative routes around that, including using Creekside Trail uh, and coming across the other way. All right. Well, I mean, I'm not trying to no, no. argue with yeah. what we're doing. I just want to make sure that, you know, we don't go way down the road on something and then find out that we have, because we, I mean, have like eight zoning and planning meetings with screaming, yelling. Yes, I, I made sure that the committee read the minutes of all of those meetings. You, I'm sure you remember them well. And so we're aware of that as, as a, it, it's a barrier that we need to overcome either by creative um, routing or, or and, and, and also with a combination uh, combined with some PR among the residents of, of the township. So yes, we believe, we believe it's a barrier that can be overcome somehow. Are there any questions in regards to the residential projects, commercial projects? I know it's a lot. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to call me or send them to, to the superintendent. We, uh, we meet quarterly in this community, um, the superintendent, myself, and the city manager. Uh, actually, Paul, I meet a lot more than that, but uh, just because of what we see going on in the community. So if you have any questions, feel free to call me or, or uh, send them a call. Uh, next, yes, ma'am. Every, before every one of our meetings, we have packets that the board gets, and the packets are put on uh, our website. In those packets, it includes all the information about the buildable lots, but another piece of the information that would be valuable if you could add it is we presently have the amount of money anticipated from those housing lots that are built that will come into the township. I don't think it would be a lot <coughs> difficult to add another column about what the school income might be anticipated from those. If that would be a valuable thing to add to the school. It's my only copy that I'll share with you. What uh, Ms. Graff is talking about is a bi-weekly report that we give to the township trustees. One of the pages shows the tax revenue that the developments and the houses are going to, and the permits are going to generate for the township. So we could easily maybe look at adding the impact. And it's just for the unincorporated <coughs> area. Uh, but we can also look at potentially adding the impact for the schools and how much money will generate as well. The township went through a restructuring of our uh, zoning department, potentially <coughs> based on the commercial and the residential development that you've seen. So perhaps, which uh, is perhaps alluded to, this was an area of a quarterly update um, and to collaboration between the schools and the township um, and it ties into other planning and projects that, that we have going on as well. But, uh, there, there's cross-sharing information that would be very valuable. There's a lot of exciting uh, things going on in the township, uh, including uh, a lot of work we're doing with the airport as well. Are there any other questions on the residential commercial? Uh, I'll go to the next, next on the agenda for the fire explorer program. The chief and I are going to talk about some exciting things that the fire department is doing. Uh, and some of the interaction that we have with our schools and more importantly, the students. Uh, the first program I'd like to talk about is the Explorer program. Um, this is for any young student who is interested in EMS, emergency medical services, firefighting, uh, between the ages of 15 and 21. Uh, they can join the Explorer program with our fire department. Uh, they go through a little training a small little graduation ceremony and then they get to ride along with our paramedics and our firefighters who do an excellent job. You might have seen them recently in the news. Uh, our firefighters got another award um, in regards to their work in uh, EMS and the American Heart Association actually 
uh, gave that award. Um, right now we have seven explorers. Uh, all of uh, five live in the Beaver Creek community. Uh, three of which are uh, Beaver Creek High School students. Two are from Carroll High School, and the other two are currently from the Fairborn School System. Um, so we have worked with the superintendent. Um, we are working also with the principals uh, to get that word out. Young men and women interested in uh, firing EMS. There is a shortage, um, and the chief's going to speak to this uh, topic next. But there is a shortage of police officers and firefighters and, and paramedics nationwide, and we're starting to see that impact on our fire department. Our fire department is run by the township, uh, and it provides services to the unincorporated as well as the city of Beaver Creek. Uh, and uh, we've got some a lot of exciting things and a lot of. It, uh, growth within our fire department, as you can see, one reason is a lot of growth in the unincorporated area of the township. Um, so if you have anyone interested, as students, uh, please get the word out, and uh, we're looking, there's no cap or limit. So, this is a great program. I got to spend a night with this Explorer program. I was there for about four hours, and I was impressed with um, the relationship between the firefighters and the kids how excited they were. And when I attended that breakfast a couple of weeks ago, the old timers breakfast, I was talking to one of the explorers and he was so excited that he was now getting to ride paramedics and do these things. He said, I actually got to, you know, take the blood pressure and do this. I mean, they are so excited about what they're doing. Yeah, so it's a it's program. It's an incredible program. I, I know one of the kids in the program who might live with me, but I was gonna say <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's in the program. He, he is really enjoying it. Um, I started out the same way. Uh, Beaver Creek didn't have an explorer program, but I started out in the Fairborn Fire Department, um, which gave me my kind of love of public service to the community, whether I was given back as a firefighter or given back as your township administrator, uh, back to the community. So, I, but he's, he made it clear he doesn't want to be the township administrator. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, uh, the Chief, Chief Boss is here to talk about some things that we're um, going to be working with, with the schools on and some of the current programs that we're currently in and some uh, exciting trainings that we have coming up next week, actually. Thank you, Thank you sir. Um, as Mr. Sahari mentioned, uh, one of the uh, nationwide issues that the fire service is facing is this uh, lack of uh, students who are interested in going into trades generally and then the fire service uh, in particular. Uh, and that is hitting home for us. So uh, to give you some perspective, I graduated Beaver Creek High School in 1989. My first exposure to the fire department was when the volunteers came out and did essentially a career day, uh, introduced me to the option, and it took me a few years to figure out that that was the way to go, but I, I did. Um, that was kind of the end period as we we're getting volunteers from within the community. So uh, from 1989 all the way back to 1946, we were primarily a volunteer fire department. Uh, the fire department was served by the people who lived here, um, and there was a huge investment uh, between the community into the fire department and back again. Uh, what we've seen basically in the 90s and now into the 2000s and, and to today is that the volunteers side of the fire service, at least in suburban uh, Ohio, uh, and especially in this region, has all but died out. So uh, the fire department, Beaver Creek, has gone through uh, two kind of uh, eras since I've been here. Uh, we finished off the volunteer era in the late 90s and went to a full-time, part-time uh, era. And that would kind of tied us through the 1990s and then until about uh, 2014, at which time we were having trouble getting part-timers. And even if we could get part-timers, we had a hard time getting them to stay. Uh, and so we've made a transition to an all-career department in 2014 at the end of the year. Um, the volunteer program and then eventually the part-time program did one huge thing for us. It anchored us to the community and it provided a funnel or a, a pipeline of talents uh, to uh, move people uh, into the or, uh, profession and then from the profession into our organization. Uh, so we developed a relationship with them, they had a relationship with the community, uh, and it, it was a really good setup. And that has unfortunately died away with, with these changes that have happened. So what we're looking at right now, for example, is we just hired uh, 10 firefighters, 
Uh, nine of those firefighters uh, were hired to staff a new fire station that's in direct response to the growth that you've already seen tonight. Uh, that will be tentatively located at the uh, fire department property at the fairgrounds and trade line. And so those nine new firefighters that we hired to begin training so they're ready when the station uh, is built and opened and we're in the process of doing that right now. Um, they came from outside of the community. They don't have any tie or prior uh, relationship with the community or with us essentially. And what we're looking to do is change that. So uh, we met uh, a couple, well, about two months ago now, I guess, uh, with your superintendent and his staff, and we discussed some different options. And what we're looking to do um, is to take that idea of the Explorer program that's already implemented and move that into the school system. So what we're looking to do is uh, take an idea that's uh, they're doing actively in Kettering, they're doing it down in Warren County, uh, but that is provide a trade track uh, for the fire service from within the schools. So our goal would be to eventually have a, a point where we can start getting students who are interested in their sophomore, junior, senior years in the fire service, introduce them, provide them the trains, training that they need to become professional firefighters or paramedics as part of their school curriculum, and then also develop that relationship that we used to have with Beaver Creek uh, students and move them hopefully into the uh, fire department as part of our future and, and restore some of that relationship that's going on. Uh, so in a perfect world, if we can work it all out, what we'd like to do is as early as next, well, I guess next school year is technically 18 or 17, 18, the 18, 19 school year, we'd like to begin uh, being able to offer some classes and, and recruit students into a program. Um, so there's a lot of work that I don't understand on the education side that has to happen for that to, to occur. Um, but certainly we have uh, a lot of the talent and the training uh, resources necessary to do the instruction. Uh, so if we can work with the schools and continue building that out, our goal is to be able to start hiring Beaver Creek resident students who are Beaver Creek trained and bring them into the Beaver Creek Fire Department and continue that long tradition that we've had. Yes, ma'am. So in these courses are in that building in the high school itself? Or in a fire station training okay. center, or most likely a combination of the two. So those are some of the details that we're just now starting to, to tackle. Um, but uh, one of my goals, if so this is me not understanding the education part, uh, and that's why we've got uh, Mr. Rotten and his staff are helping us through it. I would like to be able to get kids in their uh, sophomore year of high school get them in the training program, and by the time they graduate, have their EMS certification, their fire certification training, if not the actual testing certification, because there's some state requirements as far as age and, and graduation and things like that. But have their training so that they can come out of the program ready to go into a fire service career, and then us have a relationship with them. And then eventually we'd like to expand this into a track where they could then take that and do Part of their college uh, track and get credit for say a two-year degree at perhaps Clark State or Sinclair towards a fire service degree and potentially even eventually a four-year degree program uh, in fire service administration or something similar to that so one of the goals is let's get some relationships developed and get students trained and turned out and able to be here but then how can we take that and maximize the potential for them and give them the opportunity to not only get the high school education but the uh, secondary education as well. So that uh, the fire service obviously is a growing profession. Uh, when I started, you did not need a degree. You still don't technically need a degree, but we're really encouraging that and promoting that, especially for officers and, and chief officer development. And so we wanna make sure that the students have the opportunities to come out of the program, not only with professional certifications, but also at least a pathway, if not um, a degree in hand to get those as well. So. Uh, most of the firefighters you talk to, if they're working on a degree, wish they had done it before they went into the fire service because they come in, they get the training, they start working, they get a family, and then it makes it very difficult to go back and do that after the fact. So we want to build that on the front end if possible. So that's probably the most exciting news I have for tonight. Um, it's something that we're really looking forward to. I think it's probably one of the best innovations that we can work on together uh, for the future of the fire department and tying it back to the community and the folks who are doing any questions on that? Okay. Um, I have, because it wouldn't be a meeting if we didn't have a few things that didn't make the agenda, <laughs> I'm honest. I do have three other things I'd like to throw out at you that are actually really quick uh, compared to that. Uh, the first is another opportunity that, that we're exploring right now. 
is introducing a fire resource officer into the schools. Um, so we're looking at that from a program side and a budget side right now. We've already talked to the superintendent and his staff, and there's some interest if we're able to do it. And basically what we'd like to do is provide a fire version of what you already have with the police department. But a point of contact to handle all of the fire-related things that tend to go on with the schools, uh, from the trainings, the uh, tornado drills, fire drills, the inspections, the public public education events, and all those things. Where we already have integration, we'd like to have a single point of contact that becomes that primary liaison. So that's something we're looking at doing uh, with our 2017, 20, or excuse me, 2018 budget as we uh, finish out our budget planning process. The next thing we're doing, and we've already agreed to this, and we're working out the details now, and that is we're going to be providing CPR and stop and lead training for staff and students alike. Um, so uh, we're heavily involved in that already, and we've been doing staff, if not exclusively, uh, we've done a, a large number of the staff uh, up until now. So we're going to uh, build, finish building that out. And then, as you're probably aware, students are now required to get to contact to that uh, sometime during their high school education. So we'll be providing that as well. Uh, and we have uh, just recently included the Stop the Bleed, which is a uh, traumatic bleeding tourniquet program into our uh, uh, CPR, which also includes AED, which is the automatic external defibrillator process. So we'll be getting all of that and we'll be providing that to the students. And again, that just becomes another contact point for us to, uh, to reach out to them. And then the last thing is an open invitation for you. Um, we are in our seventh year of a partnership with the schools and local law enforcement where we do an active threat, active shooter training event. Uh, it's an event that we do at one of the school buildings uh, each summer after school's let out. This year we'll be doing it at Ferguson, um, Ferguson Hall, I guess it's technically what it's called. Um, it'll be July 26th through the 28th and we'll be there from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. each of those days. Uh, Beaver Creek Fire, Beaver Creek Police, Green County Sheriff's Office, uh, Ohio State Patrol, um, you'll probably see Wright, uh, Wright Pats, uh, we'll have folks from Wright State probably there, from Premier Health, Kettering Health. Uh, this is a major um, uh, practical event where we will actually go in, uh, we will simulate from the fire department side, dealing with the aftermath of an active threat type situation. Uh, the police will obviously be working on the law enforcement side, but uh, what we focus on is uh, victim identification, location identification, moving them from the conflict zone, the hot zone, out to a triage area, and then going through the triage process and transport. Um, obviously, the schools have a major issue as far as uh, crowd control and parent control and all those sorts of things, um, accountability and all of that. So these events are extremely important for us to work together to uh, plan on the front end um, so that uh, we're not taken by surprise for anything. Um, we've put them to the test a little bit with some of our threats in the past. Uh, hopefully that's passed. It seems like it's been nice and quiet. Uh, but we want to make sure that uh, we have the skills and abilities that they're up So uh, if you're available any of those days, we'd like to invite you to come out and join us for those. Uh, as an observer, if you like, participant, if you like, uh, we have room for both. So that's all I have for you tonight, unless you have any questions for me. Thank you very much, Chief. <coughs> Thank you, Board. Uh, I'll turn it over to the Board of Township Trustees to start the roundtable. I know this is our first year uh, at the joint meeting. Um, so what we usually will do with City Council, uh, and we'd like to share that also with the, the school board, is just to uh, allow the elected officials to ask questions, roundtable discussion. That's all we have for here. I'll open it with, I, I think we've uh, given you at least a good splash of what's new, exciting, and challenging at the township. Uh, level, which includes the incorporated and the unincorporated. There was a heavy focus on residential and commercial growth and the challenges that go with that. The chief did uh, bring up a topic we discussed actually at our last meeting, which is uh, a, a trend nationally with a shortage in skilled trades. And so we just uh, would ask that you continue uh, your commitment uh, to further developing that and, and engaging in that, that process. But at this point, uh, I think there's tremendous opportunities for collaboration from both groups um, and actually a, a three-way collaboration with the city involved as well. So but I'll ask if there's any questions that you have uh, regarding anything that was presented this evening or anything else that where, where we could improve communication, uh, anything that uh, we can do to help uh, 
your jobs uh, and, and vice versa. If I may, I would just I would like to just commend Alex. Um, he was really one of the first people that met with me when I came on board here, and uh, we have maintained very consistent communication. Um, and coming in new to a community, it's been very beneficial for our district and for me personally to have that opportunity to get to know Alex and to see and understand what's happening uh, in our community. So I, I just want to commend uh, Alex for that and thank him for all that he's done for us. Thank you. Now, I think this is a very beneficial format, what we're doing tonight. I shocked us the first time and hopefully we will have many more. I think uh, together we can do a lot more together than we can separate it and uh, there's a lot of big things happening in the township and uh, which will act, act, act for sure uh, impact the school and uh, everyone else associated. So. I think it's a plus when we can work together because we understand what each other is doing. And that's, you know, when you get misinformation sometimes, it's better when you actually hear what's going on so that you can disseminate the correct information when you're talking to people, even understand it when we're planning. So we really appreciate this, and you're right. This is one of many. This is the beginning. That's right. When I first moved to Beaver Creek, I think we were building a school a year because the community was growing so fast. I think Ankeny was the last one at that point in time that went in because I knew that at that point, 75% of us had children in school. And it was a plus. You knew you wanted your kids out of school, you were willing for it. As I understand it now, the demographics have significantly changed, so maybe 75% of people do not have children in school, right. which makes it much more difficult for you to see that the school systems can continue to provide the kinds of education that I was delighted that my four children received because of the high quality that was here. And of course, it depends, it also impacts the value of our homes. If we have a good school system, the value of our homes improves. So it behooves us all to really work together to see that that combination comes together. And as we tell you about how many homes are being built, I think you're thinking there are two or three kids for every of those homes, and it's so with it. Now we have 100 homes last year. There's another 200 kids in the schools. Where am I going to put them? I mean, if I were on your seat, that's what I would do. On the other hand, I look at how much money's coming in for each of those homes. And I do know that it doesn't pay for the child in school. <laughs> so I think we have to, as joint boards, be aware of the impact we each have on the other and how can we get the information out on a continuous basis to make sure that those people that we each, and actually we serve almost the entire same constituency, how can we jointly work together to see that our joint constituents know the impacts that all these things are happening? Any other questions, Mr. Morrison? Mr. Ted? Thank you for being here. This is an incredible presentation tonight. Incredible. This covers about one fourth of our five weekly packets, so that's <laughs> 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 incredible So we still have to have Learned a lot here. Yeah. <laughs> so we appreciate the venue. We appreciate all the work you're doing for the community. Thank you, Vice versa. Is there anything else to come before our board this evening? You need a motion to yeah. adjourn off portion of the bill. Yeah. So Second. Mr. Ott. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Kreft. Yes. This time I think we'll take a three minute recess. Yeah. Okay, so we are into, I know we're going to I'm going to need a motion and a second. 
to approve the agendas presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mrs. Worker, please call the vote. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yep. Ms. Arnold? Yes. Ms. Rana? Yes. Mr. Harris? All right, there is no board reports tonight. Ms. Nails will not be here. No questions or comments from the public. So we're into a motion to second to approve the minutes of the May 18, 2017 regular board meeting and the May 24, 2017 special board meeting work session. We need a motion or a second. And I'll make the motion, but I wasn't at one of those meetings. So okay, so that's fine. Here. I'll make the motion we consider. Okay. Mm -hmm. we, we, may have, we may have to separate these because I was at a graduation, I was not here one of these. Okay, well, I will just do one at a time. Okay, so there we go. That yeah, works for me. Okay, so I need a, I need a motion to second right now for if you were here. <laughs> the May 18, 2017 regular board meeting. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that one? Okay, Mr. Rucker. Mr. Morrison. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Ms. Arnold. Are you staying? And Ms. Rodella. Yes. Motion carries. And then I need a motion to second to approve the minutes for the May 24th, 2017 special board meeting work session. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Arnold. Ms. Arnold. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Mr. Morrison. I'm staying. And Ms. Rodella. Yes. Motion carries. Okay. With the financial reports, I'm going to need a motion and a second to approve the following. The financial reports for May 2017, the May 2017 donated items, the final amended certificate of estimated resources appropriations for fiscal year 17, temporary certificate of estimated resources appropriations for fiscal year 18, the fiscal year and fund to fund transfers and advances, the ORC 5705.41D purchase order certification and the approval of the resolution of necessity of substitute emergency weapon. So moved. Second. Discussion. A um, couple of things I want to talk about. First thing I would talk about is the May financial statements. Again, we are in alignment with what our five-year forecast said and, and where we were expecting to be um, to date. The other thing I want to talk about is the um, final amended certificate of estimated resources is what we do at the end of the year to close the books. And then the temporary certificate of estimated resources allows us to um, open fiscal year 18. Those are both um, compliance issues we do for the auditors. So is E and F. Um, and then the approval of the resolution of necessity of the substitute emergency levy is step one of putting the substitute emergency levy back on the ballot for um, November. And um, we will, if you uh, agree, we will pass this resolution of necessity for the levy. Then we will send it to the Green County Auditor to certify the millage. Then after he does that, I'll bring back next month the resolution determining to proceed with the levy. And um, then I'll take it to the Board of Elections and they will have a receipt. And then we'll get levy ballot language, pass it by our attorney to go forward. So this is uh, the packet for tonight. Okay. Comment, uh, if I may, first of all, uh, Mr. Rucker, you're definitely too modest. You say that the uh, projections are um, in alignment. Uh, what you're not saying is we're 11 twelfths of the way through the fiscal year and our your revenue projections are at 99.9% .9 correction and our expenditures are 98.94% correction. I'd say that's a whole lot better than alignment. So definitely appreciate your modesty and the great job you do. Certainly also want to applaud you for our $71,000 in investment income for the month of May. Certainly outstanding, uh, and just keep up the good work. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay. Mr. Morrison? Yes. 
Ms. Arwin? Yes. Mr. Vellano? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Refreshing here. And I will need your signature of the Okay. On to business. I'm going to need a motion to second to approve the following. The employment salary changes, leave of absence, terminations, job descriptions, the approval of administrator salary schedule, the approval of manager coordinator salary schedule, the approval of tentative agreement of the Beaver Creek Education Association, the approval of substitute teacher salary regulations, the approval of the OLA policy update presented 518-17, Approval of type four reimbursements, physicians providing physicals, resolution authorizing continued membership in the Ohio High School Athletic Association for the 2017-18 school year, and the acceptance of debt, resolution approving construction documents, and bid tabulation for 2017 main elementary basement alterations. And a motion and a second. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I would like to cover a few of these items. Uh, first one is employment, salary changes, uh, leaves of absence, termination, and job description. Uh, one of the individuals that is listed in here is Mr. Jeff Jones. Uh, he is resigning as our high school principal to accept a position in the Columbus area. Uh, obviously, when you lose your high school principal, that's, that's something of concern. Uh, but this is a good move for Jeff. Uh, he's going to be closer to his family, so we are approving uh, his resignation tonight, and we want to thank him for the time that he's given to our students and staff here in our community. Uh, but I'd also, we have two individuals that I would like to re uh, recognize, and I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Schwederman and allow him to share about two individuals that we're going to be asking the board to employ tonight. Thank you, Mr. Ron. Uh, the first uh, individual that's uh, before you that was recommended for employment this evening and that we you know, put, give you for consideration is uh, Andrea Ferguson as our new assistant principal at Coy Middle School. Andrea comes to us from, Beaver, uh, from Fairborn City Schools where she has most recently served as the assistant principal at Baker Middle School. Um, she has dedicated her first 14 years in education uh, to the classroom. She's taught math and science and social studies at both the primary and secondary levels. Uh, her undergraduate and graduate work was completed at Wright State University and Bachelor of Science in Education and Master's of Education. And her principal's license um, uh, was earned there as well. She has begun at attendance at the University of Dayton where she has completed studies for and received her superintendent license also. Um, we're excited to bring Andrea aboard uh, and um, she was here earlier this evening, but due to the time constraints uh, and another commitment, she did have to leave. Um, and then I would like also to introduce you to um, Ms. Jamie Sweet. Jamie, if you don't mind standing for us. Jamie um, is being recommended as the next principal at Ferguson Hall Freshman School. Uh, Jamie comes to us from Xenia Community Schools, where she, Community Schools, where she has served as the assistant principal at Xenia High School for the last four years. And, um, She's had additional administrative experience when she's worked as the lead teacher um, in the partial hospitalization program as a, uh, for the Green County Educational Service Center. And she worked in that program for over a decade. Uh, she began her teaching career at Parkside High School in Dundas, Ontario, Canada. And um, she taught physical education at that time. Her undergraduate work and was completed at Brock University with a Bachelor's of Arts in Health Studies. And her graduate work at Canisius uh, College earned her a Master's of Science in Physical Education as well as a teaching certificate in Physical and Health Education. Uh, Jamie has also attended the University of Dayton where she has earned her Educational Leadership Certificate. I'm excited to bring Jamie on board. And um, yeah, I'm glad to introduce those two individuals to you. Thanks. Sure. And if I may say, maybe it's because I'm old, but I've had the pleasure of knowing both of the two individuals. So I've got to tell Darren, uh, you definitely hit a home run uh, with these two young ladies. They're both people of integrity, uh, hardworking, energetic people, persons, and they just love kids. So kudos to you and the entire staff for bringing these folks to be. It was definitely a team effort, a lot of good people involved. In you worked with both of them, correct? Yes, I have. So you know. 
we had a home run. <laughs> Um, item B is an adjustment uh, which ties along with our teachers uh, with the negotiated agreement which is on here as well. Also item C is an adjustment uh, in that salary schedule to reflect one of our positions here at district office. Item D is a tentative agreement between the Beaver Creek Education Association and the board. That has been ratified by our teachers so approval tonight will move that forward. We also are asking the board to approve a substitute teacher salary change. Interestingly enough, the last time that uh, substitute pay was adjusted, it was adjusted down. Um, and so we've never adjusted that back up. So now we are asking the board to move that forward. We are hopeful that this will assist with some of our needs and that rate will be at $100 a day. Um, item F is approval of the old policy updates. Those were presented at our last meeting. Type four reimbursements, we have 117 students that we have seen as impractical uh, for the district to transport. Those are not our, those are students who live within Beaver Creek but attend uh, other schools. So they, there may be two or three students and for us to run a bus there would be impractical, so we pay them. Physicians providing physicals, uh, that is for our bus drivers. And then item I is a spoiler break boilerplate resolution uh, with the OHSAA for us to be a member of, of that organization for this upcoming school year. And item J, I'm going to ask Mr. Thompson just to share a little bit about item J. Thank you. Good evening, board members. Um, item J, acceptance of bid resolution approving construction documents and bid tabulation for 2017 main elementary basement alterations. This project is part of our straight A grant that was awarded to Beaver Creek City Schools in 2016 on the museum learning. Uh, the grant is providing all the elementary buildings in our district with some level of renovation and or additional display areas for equipment to support museum learning. The project at Main Elementary is large enough that it is required to go out to bid. It will renovate the basement of Main Elementary to create a project lab, workroom, and enhanced storage areas. All funding for this project is paid for through grant funds. We worked with SHP Architects and the building to develop plans for the space. We received five bids for this project that are summarized in the bid calculation. The winning bidder is adaptive, Adaptable Office Concepts at $174,898.11. With the approval of this resolution, they can begin their work. Uh, this is an exciting project to be part of and will create some great opportunities for our kids. Any questions? Thank you. And that will conclude your business. Okay, any other discussion? Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Ms. Rogano? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Motion carries. And that brings us to announcements. Our next Board of Education meeting will be. Okay, I'm like, Thank you, sorry. Just looking at it, it just has changed again. Yes. It will be July 13th, right here at 6.30 in this room, in this building. And that takes us on to Board Comments. We're going to start with Arnold. <coughs> well, um, I want to thank whoever mysteriously left you this day. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> my birthday thing from the minute. Okay, I better put a candle on it, but you know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I just am in the mood tonight to say how much I love working uh, as part of this district. Um, we've just got the best thing going on. Um, I really am enjoying the management, the board, um, our teachers especially, um, have a place in my heart, and uh, I'm just glad to be here. Always am, but usually I don't say much, so I'll stop for an interview. Okay, Mr. Taylor. Okay, um, I think nothing highlights more <clears throat> of what makes uh, communities effective uh, than what we saw here tonight uh, with the township uh, presenting. Uh, really, a symbiotic relationship with all the stakeholders is, is what makes us work well as a community and makes Beaver Creek such a desirable place. Uh, to live and work, and uh, all of those, all of those groups of stakeholders make that possible. So again, it's a, it's a pleasure to work at such a uh, a forward-looking 
community that you would be kids. So, thank you. Mr. Morris. I don't know if I can top what, what you two have said. <laughs> it's obviously, you both right on the money. But uh, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for the incredible job that you're doing. The uh, starting with the superintendent, the treasurer. If you look at our special ed department, the uh, business office. If you look at our person, our personnel office. <coughs> Uh, technology, curriculum, everyone working together, everybody on the same page, doing what's best for kids. You can't beat that. Okay. I tell everybody all the time, this is an incredible school system. It's the best in this state. Just saying, it's the truth. We are Beaver Creek. It is an incredible school system because of the people that work here, because people care, because they put kids first. That's what everybody is about here in Beaver Creek. We have an incredible, I tell everybody, Scott's gets to Beaver Creek Schools with our superintendent and treasurer. And I thank him for both of you every day. We're so committed to our kids that they're not enough words of thanks. As far as our teachers go, they are the best. You know, they take our kids they see potential in kids that kids don't even see in themselves, and they make those kids move and grow. And that's what makes this district so special. Um, I want to thank the township tonight. It was an incredible meeting. I've learned so much here tonight. And I think this joint partnership should continue to grow. This is how we get the correct word out to all our stakeholders, and that's what's very important. And I also want to say that graduation was unbelievable. You know, when I see those third graders I have walk across that stage, it's like, how did you get to this point? You know, they're always still going to be my little babies. I told them that you're always still going to be my little nine-year-old kids. But that was, that's always an incredible day to see those kids walk across that stage and where they're headed. So I'd like to welcome our new principals to Beaver Creek. We're glad you're here. And we're glad you're part of our family because Beaver Creek City Schools is as a family, you will find that out very quickly. And everybody works together, and that's so special. I love this district, love teaching here for 24 years, and being on this board, everybody, it's a really special board, it really is, that is the truth. So, thank you everybody for coming tonight. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful summer. I'm getting on a plane at 6.25 tomorrow morning. I don't know plan that. But okay, to go to New York, but we have to go to Chicago, we have to go backwards to go forward. I never understood that. So what can I say? So have a great summer. We'll see you all here next month. And with that, so move. I, I know. I need to get this. Okay, then. Second. Thank you. Second. Yes. Okay. Whatever. And it's now eight o'clock. Okay. Thanks, everybody.